Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome to Nonprofit Enthusiast Live. I'm your host, Lashina Williams, and so excited to be back with you all. So this month's theme, as you may know, is year-end planning as some of our nonprofit organizations prepare for their year-end. Um, and we like to do this topic several times throughout the um, year because we know that you all have different year-ends. So if you missed any of our past year-end conversations, make sure that you go over to the guide section in the group, check that that out you definitely don't want to um, miss all the information we have for your end planning yeah. all right so today we have dr. soul cash back on um, with us she is the founder and CEO of the nonprofit help center and we're gonna learn a little bit more about the nonprofit help center and um, dr. soul cash if you have not met her before on our previous session so I'm gonna go ahead and bring her up Hello, hello. How are hello. you? Oh, hello, Ashina. Nice to see you again. Same here. So glad to have you back on. I am tickled to be here and talking about year end stuff. I, I can't wait for our conversation. Yes. Um, but before we dive into that, if we can just um, talk a little bit about more about your journey in nonprofit in the nonprofit mm -hmm. arena. Yeah, totally. So I actually kind of stumbled into the nonprofit sector, you know, post college. And I learned quickly that I really love working in a space where I'm doing good for my community. And my journey included a lot of roles on the development side of things as, and then the second half of my two decades in the sector was in the executive director role. And in 2018, I started my company, the Nonprofit Help Center, because I wanted to go even further in my journey of helping the people who power our communities. And along the way, I managed to pick up a master's in nonprofit management and a doctoral degree in organizational leadership, leadership psychology. So I really love getting into that people side of how we make so much impact in our communities, regardless of your cause. And my company works with hundreds of nonprofits nationwide, everything from veterinarian suicide prevention to children's museums to hunger focused organizations to domestic violence um, solutions. So I'm here for the party. I, I love working with the sector. And I think that our chat today is really going to uh, really scratch some of those of, of my passion points. Yay. Awesome. So let's get right into it. Um, so we know um, some organizations are preparing for their year end. Um, what are some tips that you have for organizations tuning in, getting ready to enter this mode? So I am all about leveraging year end for really rethinking our culture of learning. And, you know, for those organizations that have a July 1 fiscal start, and I know that's not everybody, but that's a lot of us. That is such a sweet time of year because it's six months from the time when we were doing our New Year's resolutions. It's such a nice anchor in the middle of the year to be rethinking how we do what we do around our learning, development, and training practices. And so, you know, when I think about a culture of learning, what it means to me it may mean something different to you, Lashina, and to those mm -hmm. of us who are those of your audience who are joining. But I really think that a culture of learning is where we have an organization that understands that learning is happening within each particular person who's involved, whether that's part time, full time, coming up on retirement, just joined. Every single person is doing some amount of learning and they're learning both about their own role and the organization's impact in the community, but they're also learning about the environmental context within which our organizations sit. So that could be, you know, how respected is my organization in my local community, or what's our role in state advocacy efforts? Uh, it could be what, you know, what is our particular field? What are the trends looking like? Every single person can take a bite out of that culture of learning in order to really set yourself up for a strong year ahead. Now, I have all sorts of tips. Would you like me to jump in on yes, those? Yes, that, that, I love it. I'm just like, oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. So, yes. 
So recognizing that our people are really the engine that powers our missions and investing okay. and putting the spotlight on our people as much as we can is such a great thing to do. And so at this year end, new year planning time, it's a great time to really do what, what I think are three things to really build up and nurture a culture of learning. And I know we're spending a lot of energy on program planning and budgeting and mm -hmm. new boards and new committees. This actually will be one of those activities that your entire team will enjoy doing. It's a nice reprieve from all of that kind of mechanical operational stuff. So three tips. Number one, I think it's really important to recognize what learning is in your organization. So learning is different in every organization based on size, based on your resources, based on the personalities at play. So, you know, recognizing that learning can be, it's kind of like layers of an onion. It's how to do your job. So, you know, Lashina, right now you're in the role of directing this podcast and guiding our conversation. You know, so learning for you might be surrounding guiding conversations. It might be around technology, mm -hmm. right? Those direct, like, how am I going to get my job done? So that's mm -hmm. kind of core. But then we also, when we take it out a layer, we have this opportunity to think about learning as the learning that advances us as a professional. It's almost like mm -hmm. learning for my next role. So it might be expanding out into a marketing area, understanding financials better, understanding governance practices within our nonprofit better, even though you may have no interaction with the board. So that's the next layer out is not just how I'm doing my job, but then also how am I growing as a professional? Mm -hmm. And the final layer of this onion is why does all of this matter? It could be a personal why, it could be an organizational why, but that all falls under that recognizing what learning really is defined as in your organization. So that's tip one, get the whole team together, you know, have, mm -hmm. have a lunch session where you, you go around the table and say, what does learning mean to you? Then the second tip I have is to really co-create a year of learning with the entire team. Now, this is a great time for a pizza party. It's a great time for Friday donuts. It really doesn't require a, a heavy lift. This is really just okay. getting everybody into the same team, into the same room, into the same like Slack space, like whatever it is, and get everybody's opinion on how can we design some expectations that will nurture us as people and professionals, will not be a heavy burden will advance our organization's mission and will really build up the entire team. So mm -hmm. sharing these expectations um, and really designing them in a way that makes sense for everybody. Then <clears throat> it's great if those expectations and really that co-creation process, if it also encompasses an opportunity to show what you know. So I have one client that I think is just exemplary in this. Mm -hmm. um, she has a team of 29 employees. So there's 30 people total on her team and a mix of experiences. Some are nonprofit newbies, some are seasoned pros, some are brand new to the organization, some have been there for a long time. And every couple months she does a lunch and learn where it's not that they bring in an expert to talk at them. It's actually okay. that the team does some pre-learning and then they get together and they talk about what they learn mm. show mm -hmm. now. And then that co-creation year, like co-creating the year of learning, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I also think that there's a, it's a great opportunity to say, how are we going to share out resources? And we'll come back to that one because I have, I have kind of a fun little fact for you, Lashina, but we'll come back okay. to the resources. My third tip is to recognize and evaluate, like really look at how can I recognize my people for doing a great job learning? How can I mm -hmm. encourage them to continue picking away at it? Is it that we're sharing out an article? Is it that I'm shining a spotlight on our newsletter or a bulletin board? Like these folks did a great job contributing to our learning culture. It does mm -hmm. not have to be a heavy lift. This is a 
10 minutes a week sort of a thing, but just adding to our shared knowledge and really recognizing that everybody has an opportunity to do that. I love it. So, um, so I'm going to kind of back up a little. So you talked mm -hmm. about defining what is learning mm -hmm. um, for your organization and what that looks like. And then um, and when you talked about learning for the next role, is do, would you say that's more of a personal um, reflection or something that the organization should be looking into? And if it is the organization, what would that possibly look like? Like, um, is that them, you know, speaking with that, that employee and kind of identifying what their goals are? What would that look like? Yeah, I think it's both. I think that, you know, every person is responsible for their own professional journey, first mm -hmm. and foremost. Mm -hmm. But I do think it is in an organization's best interest to embrace the conversation around let's say succession planning, let's say it's professional development journeys, right? Like mm -hmm. we, we sometimes call it career pathing. Uh, mm -hmm. It is imperative for our organizational leadership to get brave around having this conversation with, hey, what do you want to do next? Here's a fun fact. So within the nonprofit sector, mm -hmm. employees are three times as likely when looking for a new job or taking a new job, three times as likely to switch entirely out of the sector as any other for-profit sector. So anytime we have the opportunity to keep someone in the sector in a role that is uh, whatever their next step is on their journey, it is a win, not just for the organization, but for the entire sector. So you asked, what does that look like? So I think there's a couple of things that it looks like. So one is, you know, when we give our team members the opportunity to explore other areas of our operation throughout the year, you know, it could be just, you know, one time during the year, taking a half day and shadowing with somebody who's in an entirely different department. It could mm -hmm. be having somebody who is typically in your financial area going out to a donor lunch and just palling around with the development director. It could be any number of kind of cross fertilization opportunities. It could be built into the person's learning plan for the year. You know, mm -hmm. if we're doing annual or twice yearly performance assessments, being brave and having that conversation to say, hey, what is it that you wanna do next? And to even say, how can I keep you within our organization? Uh, for whatever value that team member brings. Mm -hmm. It is a scary thing, though. I want to recognize that. I, I say it as if it's so easy and simple. It's <laughs> a very scary thing because it's really scratching at the uncertainty of saying, you know, mm -hmm. hey, I have a great development director and I don't want to lose that person. Mm -hmm. And by opening up this door to say, what do you want to do next? It's almost as if we're acknowledging that at some point, I have to fill that position again. Mm -hmm. Yet, we have to remember, and this is particularly for those out there who are part of your audience, who are in leadership roles or um, supervisory or management roles, there's no way to like really turn on your listening ears. There's no way to control when somebody's going to leave your organization, but there are ways to control keeping them and encouraging them to see mm -hmm. a path within your organization. And part of that is that conversation. Yeah. I love that. And what I'm thinking about, especially because, you know, a lot of my nonprofits, um, uh, passion stemmed from the youth development arena. So, you know, I, I remain working in that area. And I just think about, you know, the common um, challenges that youth um, development organizations face, especially when it comes to retention of staff. Um, and I'm and, and in my mind, I'm just thinking about um, how could learning contribute to that potential re retention, like supporting professional development? What would that look like? Um, for like organization like these to help support hopefully keeping uh, um you know staff on but then also it's one of those things too and i get it the challenge of you invest in in these trainings and then 
within a couple months, they're gone to the next place, which, you know, you, you did talk about, yeah, you cannot control them leaving, but you know, it's that, that budgetary side of it mm -hmm. as well. <laughs> exactly. And you know, it's all, um, it's all rather, uh, there's that old saying that, uh, what is it? Man plans and God laughs. Mm -hmm. You know, there are so many different components to mm -hmm. our nonprofit's stable and sustainable operation. And we, um, you know, we, we have the budgetary aspect. We have the people aspect. Mm -hmm. And as much as we can do, when we focus our mental energies on sustainability through retention practices, Mm -hmm. uh, that's what we can do to really try and kind of smooth our journey. And part of that retention practice is building and investing in our people, uh, mm -hmm. helping them on their own learning journeys. Love it. And so what recommendation would you have for organizations? Because there are a lot of organizations that have missions with very high turnover, you know, mm -hmm. um, that's, you know, uh, but of course, you know, the, um, the employees may be moving from one one um, youth organization to another youth organization. Sure. So, so of course the learning will always benefit them, but what recommendation would you have for organizations that have high turnover um, employment to still be able to infuse learning as a part of, you know, the yearly learning plan that might not be as um, resource intensive um, yeah. for the organization? You know, one of the ideas that comes to mind is to look for opportunities where mm -hmm. there are, it's like micro learning, you know, really just that opportunity to say, hey, you know, learning as professionals, uh, it's, it's really something that we just do within each of our weeks. This is part mm -hmm. of our culture. So, you know, we believe that 15 minutes or 30 minutes of your week, we really want to see that you are um, spending that time investing in yourself, investing in like your brain and your heart. And, mm -hmm. you know, doing this, that can really, it, this sounds a little bit cheesy, but it really helps each of our team members feel seen, understood, and valued. And so mm -hmm. you know, sometimes we, we talk about this all the time, right? That nonprofits aren't able to pay as much as some of our for-profit competitors. I would love mm -hmm. to, to offer a solution to that, but it, that's, that's for another podcast, I think. <laughs> but one of the things that we can do is to, in a resource appropriate way, we can invest in our people. And so mm -hmm. that's actually one of the things, Lachine, I'll just like drop a little bit of a plug you know, okay. one, of the, one of the things that my organization does, you know, we offer, <clears throat> we have a few learning platforms that are designed to really support nonprofit professionals on their journey. But we just actually introduced a real bite-sized one that's great for that year-long learning, le learning journey that's called the Nonprofit Navigator, which okay. is just an intro, an intro to nonprofit topics. So it's not the entire deep platform, but that's a great opportunity it's a low price tag. It's a nice means of like, if you're the type of person that's like set it and forget it. Um, mm -hmm. It's the sort of thing that tees up a little bit of learning for you every week. So looking for opportunities like that, I think really, really serve, um, can serve teams of all sizes and of all budget abilities. Mm -hmm. So you talked about the solution being another podcast. Can we get a little... <laughs> Can we get a little teaser for the next podcast? <laughs> yeah, I suppose so. Like, let's do, you know, we'll, our next podcast, we'll, we'll envision it as like solving the compensation dilemma. Um, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Creating yes. retention plans, paying your people, all of that. Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> love it. Yes. We definitely have to do that. Okay. Awesome. That. Um, something else that I like that you talked about is um, co-creating the year um, and this 
the training plan with your team. And I love that, like, especially now as, you know, some organizations get ready for the end of their um, fiscal year and others soon, right? It's coming mm -hmm. soon yeah. um, or a couple of times throughout the year, it will be coming, but thinking about what this training looked like ahead and thinking about that now can ensure that you set aside those funds and prior prioritize training mm -hmm. for your organization. So I love um, that you talked about that. Um, I'm trying to see if there's anything. Oh yeah, and then go back and recognize and evaluate mm -hmm. uh, um, yes. how, how did that work? Love yeah. it. Is there yeah. anything else? Yeah, I wanna layer on one thing about okay. completing that year of learning and this is about sharing resources. So mm -hmm. I know I've been in organizations where I read, um, I you know I come across a great news article or a book or a podcast where I think, oh my goodness, a lot of my team would really benefit from this. And so I share it out. I say, hey, like check out Lashina's podcast. It's mm -hmm. really fantastic. And then what happens? Well, typically if mm -hmm. you and everybody watching, if you're like a normal human being, you'll say, wow, that sounds really interesting. And then you will not get back to it because you have other things going on. And that's mm -hmm. not really a worthwhile way of sharing resources. And so I have a little bit of a sneaky trick for helping us build a learning culture through sharing resources, but in a way that really gives the entire team um, a positive uh, a positive result. And it is my TLDR approach. And so for those who don't know, TLDR stands for too long, didn't read. And mm -hmm. it's it, it ages back to 2002 when there were like message boards on the internet about gaming. I think it was used first in like a Nintendo message board. But basically the idea is somebody sends you an article, somebody uh, sends you a really long block of text in an email or, or a text message and TLDR, it's too long. I didn't read it, right? So <laughs> we now have, this is, and this is not my, my invention at all. But we now have TLDR is when you, you know, you see an article or you see a chapter in a book and you see those bullet points at the beginning or at the end. These are the three takeaways. So when we're sharing with our nonprofit teams, our colleagues, mm. our direct reports, our peers, something that we found interesting, it is critical to share a TLDR, to assume that mm. they won't read it, look at, look at it, listen to it, uh, and to assume that if they want to, they can. But mm -hmm. your job as the sharer and in building a culture of learning is to give two or three sentences on, you know, hey, Lashina, I just read this article about fantastic nonprofit uh, retention practices. They said that nonprofits that do this, this, and this have double retention. Mm -hmm. I hope you get a chance to to read it, check it out. But even if you don't, mm -hmm. you are getting the takeaway and the person who read it is getting the opportunity to show what they know and to share their learning. So TLDR, like that's like, I think it's the secret sauce. I love it. Cause you know what I'm thinking about? So forward, um, forwarding and put, check this out. is not enough. <laughs> it is not enough. No, it is not. It is definitely, like, don't even bother. <laughs> I love it. Okay, fine. I'll add some points um, to it because I am that person. <laughs> I'll come across some there. really good stuff and I'm like, check this out. This would be great for you. Or <laughs> Yes, we've all been there. Yes. Love that. Well, thank you. Um, is there any last tips that you'd like to share um, before we end today's conversation? I think just check out our website, nonprofithelpcenter.com. Yep. We've got lots of learning resources on there. Everything from that nonprofit navigator, bite size, yeah. all the way mm -hmm. to a full on um, academy. Awesome. And say the website again for us. You got it. Nonprofithelpcenter.com. Got it. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming back on. I'm glad we identified the next um, yes. the next conversation. So that is going to be awesome. Um, but thank you as usual for coming on and joining us. And thank you all for tuning in. And we look forward to seeing you all on the next Nonprofit Enthusiast Live. Bye, everyone. Bye.